If you thought a Chinese spy balloon was bad, go to get a load of everything else China has been doing. Welcome to China Uncensored. I'm Chris Chappell. So it seems like across the country, the tale of the Chinese spy balloon has captured the imagination of millions of Americans. We begin tonight with the breaking headline late today. The Pentagon briefing reporters just before we came on the air saying they are now tracking a suspected Chinese spy balloon hovering over the northern U.S. A dramatic moment caught on camera off the coast of South Carolina. Oh my gosh, it's going straight for it. Go! Okay, I think I see why Americans like this story. If there are explosions, Americans are into it. That's the only reason Michael Bay still has a career. But I gotta say, I was pretty surprised about how the Chinese spy balloon story took off. But I've been doing this show for 10 years, so my reaction was, this is what people are freaking out about? A little spy balloon? I wish people had gotten this up in arms about, you know, all the genocide, the organ harvesting, the rape as a form of torture. It's like seeing the mafia disposing of a dead body and being mad because their shoes are made out of real leather. But I get it, those things don't quite have the same impact of this. Woo! Like I said, I really get it. But come on, even if you don't care at all about human rights in China, there are like a million more serious threats from the Chinese Communist Party. For example, did you know China is using private equity funds to gain access to critical cutting-edge U.S. tech? I made a whole episode about it this week. It was one of our lowest performing episodes. Guess it lacked a little something. Woo! But seriously, China can probably get more sensitive information from investing in tech startups than anything a spy balloon could pick up. And you think a spy balloon is bad? Try TikTok. Yeah, it's cool to watch a U.S. fighter jet blow up a balloon, but 80 million Americans are on TikTok. TikTok is a Chinese spy app. It's a weapon in your pocket. That is such a huge disconnect from the reality of the Chinese Communist Party threat. This is like being afraid of a bumblebee while sunbathing in a snake pit. Some people are now asking if war with China could be on the horizon. But the reality is, China is already at war with the United States. In 1999, two Chinese colonels wrote a book called Unrestricted Warfare. It argued that war is no longer limited to military forces because the number of battlefields is virtually infinite and could include environmental warfare, financial warfare, trade warfare, cultural warfare, and legal warfare, to name just a few. So if you think the spy balloon is bad, just wait till you hear how the Chinese Communist Party has already been waging war on America. I'll tell you more after the break. Welcome back. So, what could be worse than a spy balloon, you ask? Let's dive in. Drug warfare. Drug overdoses are now the leading cause of unintentional death in the United States, more than gun homicides and car accidents combined. So many people are dying from drugs that it's actually driving down the country's life expectancy. Which is wild considering the U.S. is a country that lives off of Big Macs. If you're able to lower that life expectancy, you know it's serious. A big chunk of those deaths are caused by a synthetic drug called fentanyl. Since 2013, China has been the principal source of the fentanyl flooding the U.S. illicit drug market fueling the deadliest drug epidemic in U.S. history. And they aren't sprinkling fentanyl across the U.S. from a spy balloon. China is supplying Mexican drug cartels with drug precursor ingredients, weapons, even handling their money laundering. So aside from actively killing Americans with drugs, what else is China doing that's worse than a spy balloon? Economic warfare. Now this might make you think of the trade war. But no, I'm not talking about the Trump administration's so-called trade war. I'm talking about the trade war China was waging against the U.S. for over a decade before the U.S. offered any response. According to this report from the United States Trade Representative, 
When it comes to exports, the Chinese government has been subsidizing local manufacturers like steel and aluminum factories, and that's allowed it to dump goods on the U.S. market at unfairly low prices. That's hurt U.S. manufacturing and caused big job losses. Though on the plus side, at least China isn't dumping steel from spy balloons. But dumping goods at low prices is just one of the many ways the Chinese Communist Party is waging economic warfare against the U.S. For example, the CCP hacks the U.S. a lot. The intellectual property China has stolen is roughly on the order of $600 billion a year. Of course, what usually happens when a company gets hacked is that they hide it, because it makes them look bad. And it's not just a few. The former NSA director says every major company in the U.S. has been hacked. And according to FBI Director Christopher Wray, China has stolen more U.S. data than all other nations combined. Of course, that's not quite as visible as a spy balloon. What also is not as visible is what was just above that spy balloon. Which brings me to space warfare. You shouldn't be worried about the Chinese spy balloon you can see. You should be worried about all of China's spy satellites you can't see. According to this 2022 Defense Department report, China's satellite fleet contains more than 260 systems, second only to the U.S. The CCP basically has eyes everywhere. They're like Sauron, but in space. Which sounds horrifying and also like the coolest Lord of the Rings sequel ever. And China is also actively trying to blind America. According to a U.S. general, China, along with Russia, are attacking U.S. satellites with lasers and jammers every day. Yes, China is using space lasers. But satellites can't see everything. That's why China is also engaging in spy warfare. The Chinese Communist Party has an extensive spy network, including even co-opting Americans. The FBI has to launch a new China probe every 12 hours. One of the reasons the U.S. shut down the Chinese consulate in Houston was because it was being used as a spy hub. The CCP also uses money to buy off influential Americans, like this Harvard professor, FBI officers, even Disney. And it's not just money. Back in 2022, Axios broke the story of Fang Fang, a Chinese national who was targeting American politicians. She used campaign fundraising, extensive networking, personal charisma, and romantic or sexual relationships with at least two Midwestern mayors. In the spy world, this is called the honeypot. Although I don't know if they're allowed to call it that in China, since hearing about honeypots makes Xi Jinping hungry. One of the people Fang Fang targeted was Eric Swalwell, who later became a U.S. congressman and member of the House Intelligence Committee, though he was eventually kicked out. So as you can see, China has its eyes on every facet of American life. And of course, China even has eyes in your pockets. Yes, they're quite naughty. Which brings me to TikTok warfare. Now, I've already touched on this a bit, but the fact is TikTok is way scarier than any Chinese spy balloon. And not just because you can find grandmas twerking on it. <sighs> 80 million Americans use TikTok. And TikTok is owned by a Chinese company, one that's very loyal to the Chinese Communist Party. In its privacy policy that you probably didn't read, TikTok says it monitors direct messages and will turn over that information to a government if there's an inquiry. What government? What inquiry? Why no government in particular? Maybe it's the government of Lollipop Land. Look how bright it is. Nothing shady here. TikTok also monitors your keystrokes, allowing it to capture personal user information like credit card numbers and passwords. I mean, they claim they don't actually do that. They just have the power to and will never abuse it. Though TikTok's Chinese parent company did access the data of some pesky U.S. journalists, as well as everyday U.S. citizens. And why shouldn't they? After all, you all agreed to it when you signed their privacy policy. Hope it was worth it for all that wonderful content. So while it's great to see people talking about the Chinese Communist Party and how it's a threat because of the spy balloon, the more important thing is for people to realize the much more serious ways the Chinese Communist Party is actively waging war on America and other countries. It's time to focus on the little things instead of just the explosions. Woo!
Of course, people who watch China Uncensored are already clued in. And China Uncensored is only possible because of support from viewers like you. Thanks to you, millions of Americans and people around the world have learned about the Chinese Communist Party. There are a lot of ways you can support China Uncensored, like by buying a China Uncensored mug at chinauncensored.tv slash merchandise, or by contributing on our crowdfunding website, Patreon, or our exclusive social media platform on Locals. So to thank you for your support, I'll answer one of your questions. Today's question comes from Ian Pendleton on Patreon. What has mainland China been importing from Russia since the Ukraine invasion began? Is it mostly natural gas, or are raw materials and foodstuffs being traded as well? And how much has Putin and his government been getting in return? An excellent question. Unfortunately, a lot of the sanctions the U.S. has put on Russia aren't working, thanks largely to China. And it's not just foodstuffs, it's critical war tech. Moscow boosted imports of technologies critical to its war in Ukraine, including semiconductors and microchips from China. Trade between Russia and China is booming. Russia is now selling more crude oil to China, and China is selling Russia, well, loads of stuff, since China is one of the few countries willing to trade with Russia. I'm sure the idea is to form a unified authoritarian bloc against the United States, especially whenever the CCP decides it's time to try and invade Taiwan. Thanks for your question and your support, Ian. And thank you for watching. If you want to support China Uncensored on Patreon, head over to patreon.com slash China Uncensored. Once again, I'm Chris Chappell. See you next time.